Hi, my name is Ms. Shaw, and today I am going to teach you how to write an interesting introduction. The lesson and objective for today is to learn how to write an introduction for a story that will make your audience want to read it even more. So how do you write a captivating introduction for your story? Other than the title, the very first thing your audience reads is the beginning of your story. If you don't grab the attention of your audience at the very beginning of your story, then they won't want to keep reading it. So, how do you catch their attention, you might ask? Stick with me, and you'll learn about five interesting ways authors use to begin their own stories. So there are four materials that you will need in order to do this. The first thing is a piece of your own writing. The second would be a pencil. The third would be the five different kinds of story introductions, which you'll learn about in the next couple slides. And the final one will be examples from famous authors, which you can find anywhere in any library, even at home. But I've got five of my favorites that I'm going to share with you. So what are the five ways to introduce your story? Well, the first one is to use a quotation or dialogue. So dialogue would be when two people are talking with one another. And a quotation, of course, is something that someone has said, oftentimes someone famous. The second way is to show an action. The third way is to ask a question. And that often is a very easy one to use. And also, of course, why wouldn't people want to keep reading your story if you asked a question? Because then they want to know what the answer is, so they keep reading it. The fourth way is to explain a thought or a feeling. And the fifth one is probably my favorite, and that one is to use a sound effect. I bet you by the time we get done, that one might be your favorite too. So here's an example of dialogue that's used at the very beginning of a story called a single shard. Hey, Tree Ear, have you hungered well today? Crane Man called out as Tree Ear drew near the bridge. The well-fed of the village greeted each other politely by saying, Have you eaten well today? Tree Ear and his friend turned the greeting inside out for their own little joke. The second one is to show an action. And this one is by Mary Casanova and the book is called The Clipfish Code. In her dream, Marit raced Papa on her new wooden skis farther and farther away from their height or their mountain cabin, and this time she was winning. Across the blinding whiteness she pushed on, defying the mountain, said to be trolls turned into stone. She herringboned to the next peak, her thighs burning with the effort, then pushed off with her poles and swooshed down through knee-deep powder. Now that one I could just picture in my head as she's racing her dad down the mountain. Couldn't you visualize that one in your head too? The next one is to ask a question, and I found an example of this in a book that I read many, many years ago, but it's still one of my favorites, called Charlotte's Web. Where's Papa going with that axe? said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Now, this one is an example of actually two of the different strategies for starting a story. One, of course, is asking the question, where's Papa going with that axe? But the second way, can you guess it? It's dialogue. Where's Papa going with that axe? And Fern is talking to her mother during that. And of course, it's such a great question because we all want to know, where is somebody going with an axe? The fourth way to write a great story introduction is to express a thought or a feeling. And here's one taken from a book I found last year called Love, Ruby Lavender. Murderers, you can't have them all! Ruby Lavender leaned out the car window and shook her fist. Now this one, of course, does express a thought or a feeling, but there are a couple of other different ways of starting a story introduction that are included in this one. This would be a good point for your teacher to pause the screencast and for you to talk about what other possible kinds of story introductions does this one include. All right. Well, first of all, we know that um, Ruby Lavender in this story is angry. How do we know that? Because she's showing an action where she's shaking her fist. 
So an action is definitely one of the ways that she's using at the beginning of this story to introduce it. Also, at the very beginning, those two first sentences, murderers, you can't have them all. That's going to be dialogue. So this author actually used three different ways, maybe even four, if you found a fourth one. We've got a thought or a feeling, which is the anger. We've got the shaking the fist, which is showing the anger. And we also have the dialogue where Ruby is shouting at someone. I wonder, did you find all of those with your teacher too? The last one is the sound effect, which I told you is one of my favorites. So here's an example from the bridge to Terabithia. And this is how the author starts the story. Barum, barum, barum. Baripity, 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 baripity. Good, his dad had the pickup going. Don't you just love hearing the sound of the pickup? I just love that one and it's so easy to use the sound effect to start your story. Now it's your turn. So the things I'm going to ask you to do are number one, look at the first draft of the introduction of a piece of writing that you're working on. Next, I want you to write a couple different kinds of the introductions that we just learned about together. And third, I want you to choose the one you think will motivate your audience to want to keep reading your story. If you've done all those things and feel good about it, I know that you will have an awesome, intriguing, and captivating introduction for your audience. Have fun!